Hey guys, this is Rob from Epica here. HMV Records asked me to show you guys a little bit of my vinyl collection. So I picked out uh, some records from, let's say, about 10 bands, I guess. Um, the first one that I picked is this one. It's made in Japan by Deep Purple. But you can see this is not the regular edition. This is uh, the anniversary edition, box edition actually. It contains nine records. It's, uh, it's a pretty heavy box, I can tell you. Uh, it actually contains all the three shows that have been recorded just for one record. And I can tell you this, in my point of view, this is probably this band at its absolute peak. I really love this record. And it's funny because the story behind it is that actually I believe that Deep Purple originally didn't actually wanted to record a live album because they were more of a studio band and you, even they they were surprised how well it turned out. So so yeah, this is a really cool thing for the Deep Purple members out there. Speaking of another classic rock band and a very influential band if it comes to heavy metal, Black Sabbath, obviously. Black Sabbath Cross Purposes Live. This isn't uh, a record with Ozzy on vocals, this is uh, actually a record from the era with Tony Martin on vocals. Um, I know there's always a lot of discussion going on what is basically the best stuff that Black Sabbath released. And I can understand that a lot of people are totally into the Ozzy era. I also love the Ozzy era, but I'm actually uh, very much a sucker for the Tony Martin era. Much more the 80s work of Black Sabbath. And this album, it's, I believe it's an official bootleg. Yeah, it's actually a combination of stuff from the Dehumanizer tour. It has a lot of classics from the Aussie era, but also a lot of the Tony Martin era. This is a really cool record. If you ever have the ability to check it out, go for it. Speaking of Black Sabbath, if you ask me what is my favorite Black Sabbath album, maybe that's also a thing of mood, I don't know. That's probably Mob Rules. Because I think this is probably one of the most melodic but also heavy records they ever made. Also, I have very special uh, memories to this record because if you take a good look at it, it also contains all the autographs from Ronnie James Dio, Geezer Butler, Vinnie Epicy, also Tony, Tony Iommi, obviously. And um, they actually signed this record when uh, I was playing with my band on a festival and we shared the stage with a band called, called Heaven and Hell, which is this lineup, but they had to change the name for it. So yeah, I have some very fond memories of this. Next band, Alice in Chains. Yes, but no, it's not dirt that I picked out. I picked out this one. I hope we're dinosaurs here. This is, uh, this is the second record with William Duvall on vocals. This is uh, yeah, post Lane Staley era. Like I said, I'm a huge Alice in Chains fan and you know, doing shows with a new singer, with a singer that has so much impact on the sound of this band, I thought they were never going to make it, but I'll be very honest, they blew me away. And I uh, also got a little bit more respect for somebody like Jerry Cantrell. You can now actually hear how much of uh, his vocals are actually, I mean, it's not just Lane Staley who's singing, it's, it's also his voice you constantly hear. So he has a major influence on the sound of that man. So yeah, I really dig this album. One of my favorite bands of that early 90s era is Soundgarden and uh, I think my favorite album is probably Bad Motorfinger but I chose this release, Telephantasm. This is uh, another box, it's a pretty big box and it contains a lot of unreleased material. It's also a compilation of uh, some of their greatest hits but also it contains a lot of obscure stuff, also live recordings and demos and whatever. And this is such a really cool box. It's has a lot of colored vinyl and pictures and all these cool extras that us nerdy music collectors will probably appreciate. So yeah, if you ever, if you're a Soundgarden fan, if you're able to snack this one, go for it. I can really recommend it. Let me see. Next one, Queens of the Stone Age. And no, it's not Soundgarden for the Death that I actually chose. I chose Lullabies to Paralyze. And as you can see, this is uh, this is actually, I believe, the very first pressing of this album because it has a different artwork than the CD version. And why did I choose this album? Probably because everybody is always saying that Songs for the Deaf is the best one, which I do understand because it is an amazing album. This is probably one of their best, if not the best, album. But this one is 
therefore even more underrated because it was the follow-up album and it was very almost impossible to top that album and uh, I hear a lot of people complain about this one but I think this is a really 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 cool album because it's very dark it's very diverse it's not necessarily a stoner rock album but uh, it has a lot of different um, influences a lot of different sounds a lot of cool uh, guest musicians on it and uh, yeah next one Pride and Glory for all the Zach Wilde fans out there uh, most people know Zach Wilde as the guitar player of Ozzy Osbourne but uh, you probably also know him as the singer and guitar player of Black Label Society also a pretty cool band but before that he had a different band called Pride and Glory it was somewhere in the 90s I believe it was 94 but I don't remember exactly but uh, it was only released on CD and uh, my brother was also a big fan of this band so uh, when this was released on vinyl he called me right away and he also ordered me a piece so I was very happy to finally release this to finally to receive this one on vinyl very cool record uh, it's, it's a little bit different compared to uh, Black Label Society which is a little bit more heavy, doomy I guess, rock and roll and this is, has way more uh, it's, it's, it's clearly a hard rock record but it was recorded as a three piece just Zach Wilde on guitar and vocals uh, just drums and bass with it he was just performing as a three piece and uh, you should just check it out I think it's an amazing record and also live they were really good Tribulation, Children of the Night I mean I must be honest this is one of the bands that I discovered I guess a few years ago and I'm a really big fan these guys originally started as a death metal band uh, but through the years they kind of sound, changed their sound and these days they're a little bit more of a whew, how should I describe them it's a mixture of a uh, really dark classic rock you could say uh, the vocalist has a really gnarly scream it's almost like he's singing black metal uh, but it also has a big uh, of a gothic infusion into it, so it's a mixture of heavy dark classic rock meets black metal sound wise. Does that make sense to you guys? I don't know But you should definitely check it out. They recently also released a new album But I'm still waiting for that one because of all the COVID crap going on right now all the orders are coming in late so Yeah, so for now, uh, I'll just stick uh, to the first records Ah Another cool uh, new release, Mr. Bungle. For those of you guys who know uh, Mr. Bungle, uh, Mr. Bungle has never really been a band or project or whatever you want to call it that sticks to one specific genre. So it always has been a mixture of almost like Frank Zappa ish, rock meets avant garde. You can hear soul, you can hear Latino jazz, and it goes, it's all over the place. And it's. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's always been a very, very entertaining band. And this record is definitely 180 degrees the other way around, because uh, this is not just Mike Patton with his uh, fellow band members, but this also uh, record also contains Dave Lombardo from Slayer on drums and Scott Ian from Anthrax on guitar. So, yeah, if you look at the artwork, it looks like a, you know, looks pretty metal to me. And that's exactly what it is, because this record is basically... Uh, 80s old school thrash metal so yeah really cool next one one of my favorite bands Mastodon but not Crack the Sky or Leviathan or Emission no it's Blood Mountain and it's the picture disc edition I really love this album when they released this album somehow I got addicted to their music and I guess the main reason is that because this record is probably I think, in my opinion, this is probably their most experimental album that they ever released. Because it contains so much different aspects of the, I mean, they're also their hardcore background, uh, sludgy kind of sound, but also a lot of progressive elements into it. After this, they released Crack the Sky, which is probably their most 60s, 70s progressive rock influenced album. Uh, and this is somewhere in between. This is... Uh, I guess that's the reason why I like it so much because it has everything comes together on this record so we're almost out of time I guess and uh, last but not least this is uh, this is also one of those records that I've been raised with and uh, I believe I have this one on at least 
eight pressings or something like that. The Lizzie, Life and Dangerous. In my opinion, probably one of the all-time best rock bands ever. This is definitely, yeah, this band on its best. This is definitely the peak of the career of Thin Lizzy. And speaking of Thin Lizzy, recently there is a, there was a, it's not final, but Rock Legends, the ultimate box by Thin Lizzy. And if you're a big Thin Lizzy fan, you should def definitely check this one out because it contains the uh, greatest hits. It contains some really cool B-sides and rough mixes from the early years. Also it has a lot of rarities on it. A lot of live recordings. Uh, yeah, also a DVD on it. It's go check it out. This is uh, a really amazing box. So, yeah, hopefully you guys uh, like what I brought to you, and uh, please check them out. Uh, Epica is also about to release a new album. We're going to release it on the 26th of February. It's called Omega, and uh, I'm looking forward to see you guys on the road. Perhaps this year, maybe next year. Who knows? Take care. Bye.